Welcome back to the Q&A session of the vaccine video. This will be an overview of COVID vaccine questions generated by our previous work. If you haven't already, check out the main video for the in-depth look into the science behind the mRNA vaccines. And if you have any further questions, let us know in the comments below. This is the number one concern on everyone's mind. Will the vaccine affect my DNA? The answer is no. mRNA vaccines harness the body's natural processes. A short snippet of either Moderna or Pfizer RNA enters specialized immune cells and instruct them to make a harmless piece of the virus. This piece is then presented to the immune system for other cells to learn about and to mount a vigorous response when the virus enters for real. In general, RNA is a flimsy copy of DNA and has no more chance of incorporating into our genome than a page of a Xerox paper can go back and become a part of a computer screen that just printed it out. You will hear armchair biologists throw around terms like reverse transcriptase and retrotransposants, but let me assure you there is no plausible way that mRNA vaccines are going to alter your DNA. I will point you in the direction of the best reference I've found on the subject, and if you want more details, just look for the link in the comments below. How long will the mRNA stay in me? That's a very good question. First, it is important to understand that mRNA is fragile and that our cells are designed to destroy it. Natural mRNA lasts from several hours to several days, and both Pfizer and Moderna had to work really hard to make their RNA survive at all. This jives with a response to the vaccine, which could be intense, but usually resolves by day four. What are the side effects? As the vaccine mRNA produces the pieces of the virus, the immune system kicks into gear and learns their enemy. That natural process involves molecules called cytokines, and these are the molecules that cause fever, chills, body aches, etc. This process can be more intense after the second dose, but either way it is self-limited to several days. People with previous coronavirus infection tend to have stronger response, but that passes quickly as well. I am worried about long-term effects. This is where the you-never-know mentality kicks in and could be really dangerous. Vaccines usually cause side effects within two months. Both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were studied in thousands of people for that amount of time, and no significant side effects were found. This makes sense, as the vaccine mRNA is gone in several days, but, since we do not have any longer-term data, many people are wary because, well, you never know. This thinking misses a very big point. Imagine taking your child for a walk around town. You come to a one-way street and you tell them to look both ways. The traffic comes from the right, but you look to your left too because, you know, something can come from there and you never know. Makes sense. Well, on the path of life, you do not get to look both ways. You either take the vaccine or you don't. I will post to you that we are under attack. The virus numbers are growing across the country with 24 million cases already and growing by about 200,000 cases per day. That is the city of Richmond, Virginia or two Albany's New York worth of coronavirus per day, every day. How long do you think it will take before it comes to your doorstep? Giving in to the you-never-know paradigm is like telling your child to look to your left where there is a tiny chance of a stray car coming from while ignoring an onslaught of the evening rush of cars coming from the right. No one, not the FDA, not Moderna or Pfizer, can guarantee you the long-term safety of these vaccines. But neither are we seeing any big problems despite millions of vaccines given already. If you want to worry about long-term problems, start thinking about those caused by the virus. Loss of smell and taste, pervasive fatigue, prolonged shortness of breath. Does not happen to everyone, the lucky ones will escape without scathe, but I personally know many patients, both young and old, who live in wonder that their normal selves are not back yet, months after the infection. The virus is a lean, multiplying, body-invading machine. The short snippet of self-dissolving vaccine mRNA cannot even compare. Stop looking at it in a vacuum. The endless theorizing ignores the real and present danger of infection and can cost you or your loved ones everything. Here, we need to address something very important. A trust gap between science and the public that is holding a lot of people from getting the shot. Both sides can do better. Science communicators need more humility to admit that science is ever-changing, that even dogmas can be overturned, 
and that the collective gut feeling of the public cannot be dismissed. For its part, the public, you, need to admit that decades of precise lab work have produced knowledge that has been verified and could be trusted. We need this agreement to work or we are going to suffer. The poisonous feeds of social media are doing disproportional damage to the elderly, the less educated and the communities of color. Look what happened in Uptown Manhattan the other day. In a spirit of finding a middle ground between wary grandmothers and molecular biologists, let us take a look at just two of these circulating stories and show you how a kernel of fact can easily be misrepresented, used to sow doubt, and weaponized to bring you harm. First is the famous Bill Gates microchip story. Started as a viral video in early 2020, the story suggests that Bill Gates promoted placement of tracking chips into the coronavirus vaccine. Here, let's take a look. To digital innovations like vaccines, we need a measurement system that tracks the vaccines, that tracks the vaccines, that tracks the vaccines, that tracks the vaccines. Welcome back. A $140 million government contract is under... Crudely edited to pick out and reinforce the chosen phrases, the video drones on about tracking syringes, which is a technology that makes perfect sense. The RFID chips on the syringes cut down on paperwork and can alert of expired vaccines. But the video then jumps into a totally separate story on actual human chips and hopes to connect the two. Only we know instantaneously where and when that dose has been used. The microchip is safe in humans. I'm very concerned about this. I don't know if I'm ready for this yet. Jamel Golden says even if she could, she would not put a tiny microchip into her son Leo's arm to track him. And hopes that she do not notice the absurd connection. It also throws in Melinda Gates speaking of the ability to create the world that we want, a clear reference to the even older depopulation theories of the new world order, where the world's elites are there to destroy us all. We talked about the incredible opportunities that technology gives us in the future to create the world that we want, to create the world that we want, to create the world This video is so crude and simple that it is laughable. Most people are able to see through it, and yet, fall for more sophisticated efforts like these. One of the most impactful misinformation campaigns involved an actual immunologist, a professor at University College Dublin in Ireland, who uses far more sophisticated techniques to claim that people will start dying few months after COVID vaccine. Here, the kernel of fact is far more substantial as Cahill spends 12 minutes building on a known process called Antibody Dependent Enhancement, or ADE. This is the process where production of suboptimal antibodies from a vaccine can actually cause a worsened disease with the later exposure to the real thing. This famously happened with a dengue vaccine a few years ago and an RSV vaccine in the 90s, and Cahill's video shares similar concerns in the early work on the first SARS in 2012. So far, so good, as these concerns are real, but then she uses the same mental trick as the microchip people and stretches the fact to suit her purpose. By minute five, she pivots into fallacy and states that the vaccine mRNA will integrate into our genes, making us into genetically modified organisms, something that is not true. She goes on how this will translate into the disaster of ADE and autoimmune death by the spring. It took me a while to try to understand her stance. She really is an accomplished professor of immunology, so what gives? There are two issues here. First, the concerns about ADE were legit, and we really did not know if they would occur here. The subjects in the vaccine trials were warned about that possibility, and the trials were designed to detect it. Thankfully, this has not happened. Only few known viruses cause this kind of a reaction, and SARS-2 does not appear to be one of them. Cahill should know this by now, and yet she continues to push the narrative, enhancing it with outright inaccuracies about gene integration, which she must know are not true. So what is the motivation? Well, turns out that Dolores Cahill is not only a professor of immunology, but also a political leader of a far-right Irish Freedom Party, known for its anti-lockdown and anti-vaccine activities. Politicians have agendas, and hers is to draw people to her cause. She spent most of the 2020 arguing the benign nature of COVID and preaching against lockdowns to gain followers, 
And, as that rhetoric crumbled in the face of the worsening pandemic, she changed her tack to preach against the vaccines instead. So, in essence, this is a sophisticated political ad to draw support in a country half a world away. The concerns expressed were valid six months ago, but, thankfully, are proving to be unfounded. I will suggest that to make decisions about your own health based on politics of Ireland, well, that would be unwise in the least. There are countless other stories like these, like the vaccine will cause my infertility hoax that I address in the comments below. Unused to information warfare, millions of people around the world take these stories as at least possible, letting anxiety take hold. This powerful fear overwhelms the common sense and the ability to discern the real from the imagined. And what of our parents and grandparents who fall for this kind of thinking? They are the most vulnerable to severe disease and yet also the most vulnerable to misinformation. Once again, I implore you, understand the nature of the threat aimed at your mind and please do not believe everything you read on the internet. What about allergic reactions? This concern is warranted. We already know that this vaccine can cause allergic reactions at the 10 times rate of the flu vaccine, so we have to be careful. Manufacturers tell us to watch for vaccine components, but who knows whether they are allergic to polyethylene glycol or the lipid nanoparticles. A more practical approach is this. If you have had severe anaphylactic reactions to anything in life such as shellfish or bee stings, be extra careful. Ideally, these allergies do not cross-react, but I would choose to vaccinate at a site like a hospital, where the EpiPens are not only present, but come with a staff who knows how to use them. Talking to your allergist prior to the shot would also be a good idea. If you never had an anaphylactic reaction, but suffer from lesser issues such as rashes, you'll likely be fine, but discuss that with your doctor as well. Does the vaccine cover the new variants? There are new variants arising, most famously the UK, South African and Brazilian variants that seem to be more infective. Looks like both Moderna and Pfizer will do very well against the UK variant, which is the main new threat in the US, and the companies are already working on booster shots for the South African mutation as well, just in case. There may be more new variants in the future, of course, so I predict that this is not the last vaccine we take. The virus is mutating, and we mean to tweak the vaccine for 2022 like we do with the annual flu vaccine. I hope we won't have to do that for the years beyond that. And finally, I just want to wait a little longer. This one is aimed at the hesitant hospital staff everywhere. Whereas the general public is desperate to get the vaccine, many of our staff are still not convinced to get it now. They want to wait a bit, they say. The question is, what are we waiting for? Like I said, the virus cases are spiking and the new UK variant will make things worse. CDC projects that it will be the dominant variant in the US by March, so that is by when we should aim to be vaccinated. Look, this virus is not going anywhere, and the reason I got the shot myself is simple. I figured that whatever success I had so far with the protection in the hospital may not be enough by March. I also figured that whether now, in August or next October, this virus will be waiting for me somewhere and will get me then. Some may be waiting for other vaccines to arrive, but that means either AstraZeneca or Johnson & Johnson, both of which will be a single shot, but also less effective. Johnson data just came out and it showed its vaccine to be only 66% effective overall. Also, efficacy differed depending on geography and likely the viral strain. The shot was 72% effective in the US, but only 57% effective in South Africa. In the end, nobody wants a new shot going into their arm. But like I have said before, this is all risk versus benefit, and the benefit of the vaccine sure seems to outweigh the risk. All the best, everyone. Thank you for watching. How has it been giving these vaccines here? How does it feel? It feels great. It feels great that we're finally immunizing the staff. You know, I think everyone's worked really hard throughout the surge, and it's it's a good feeling to be able to, you know, offer something for protection. So I'm really proud to be part of this initiative, and I hope everyone can come down to get their first dose of their vaccine. That's fantastic. <laughs>
and as a result, I understand you. Yeah, I watched your video and I took my vaccination. I changed my mind after watching that. Excellent. Awesome. How do you feel about it? I feel good. I'm right? uh, due for my second vaccine, second dose tomorrow. Yeah, me too. You and I both. All We're right, there we go. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.